Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to talk about two classes which were added in C++17. Any optional. In C++17, STD Any and STD Optional were officially added to the standard library. While these classes are new to standard C++, they have been available in the Boost library for many years. STD Any is a normal class and STD Optional is a templated class. What makes these two classes interesting and useful is how they contribute to writing type safe code. Understanding type safety beyond a generic definition is required in order to use these classes effectively. Before we can talk about the STD Any class, we need a good definition of type safety. From a computer science standpoint, the idea of type safety involves asking the question, to what degree will my computer language help prevent or reduce the opportunity of making data type errors? Some computer languages leave this task entirely to the discretion of the programmer, while others include some level of built-in support for type checking. No matter what language you are using, it is your job as a software developer to make sure your application is type safe. In a truly type safe application, all variables, arguments, and return values will always contain data of the appropriate type. Any operations using this data must be done with consideration to the data types. In addition, the API should never allow operations which violate the intent of the data type produce meaningless results, or would result in undefined behavior. If a computer language has type safety checks, these may occur at compile time or at runtime. A program which never converts values from one data type to another is very likely type safe. The most common type errors occur when a value needs to be converted from one data type to another. The discussion about type safety has a few gray areas where people disagree about the definition. Some type conversions are well defined, so they might be considered type safe. However, other conversions may result in a loss of information, which is not necessarily safe for the conditions of your program. For example, converting a float to an int involves truncating the fractional part. Some consider this unsafe, since precision has been lost in the conversion. Others consider this to be type safe, since the operation converts a valid floating point number to a valid integer in a consistent way. Regardless of your opinion in this area, it is important to consider conversions when you are evaluating a program to determine whether it is actually type safe. C++ provides a significant amount of type checking which is done at compile time. However, the compiler cannot report every error at compile time, since this might be a judgment call or not enough information is available until runtime. You cannot count on the compiler reporting all type errors, so your program must contain the appropriate checks. What happens when you pass a care to a function which expects a string? Do you check for values outside the range of a given data type? For example, you should not assign the number 300 to a variable with the type uint8 underscore t, which has a maximum value of 255. So, can the compiler report an error when you explicitly cast a value from one type to another? The answer depends on the type of cast you are doing. For a reinterpret cast, there is no type checking at all, and the compiler simply trusts the conversion you wrote. In the case of a dynamic cast, there is type checking, but it only occurs when the cast happens, at runtime. It is your responsibility to ensure the cast returns valid information before operating on the data. In the case of a static cast, the compiler checks the source and destination data types at compile time to make sure the cast is allowed under the rules of the C++ type system. 
whenever you are using a cast, be aware that you are overriding the type checking of the compiler, and take whatever steps you need to ensure your program remains type safe. In order to understand type safety, let's look at an example. The void star data type is often found in legacy code, and it makes a very interesting example for our discussion. This data type represents a pointer to an unknown type. If you have a value of type void star, the only things you can do with that value are compare it to another pointer or assign it to another void star variable. Both of these operations are absolutely type safe. Pointer comparisons are well defined in the standard, and this assignment is guaranteed to work since there is no type conversion. This means the void star data type itself is perfectly type safe. This is surprising to many programmers since void star is considered to be very unsafe. The unsafe step occurs when you want to access the data in the void star. Since you cannot dereference a void star, you must use a reinterpret cast to convert the type to a specific pointer type before accessing the data. This kind of cast tells the compiler no need to do any type checking, just trust the code is correct. Code which uses a void star runs the risk of type errors at runtime, so programmers consider the entire data type to be dangerous. As you see, this is actually incorrect since the problem is the cast and not the void star itself. The class stdany is a container for a single value of any data type. The any class is not a template, so there is no provision to specify the type of data it should contain. It is referred to as a type safe container. However, the common definition is simplistic and perhaps a bit misleading. If you look at the actual definition in the C++ standard, it never says stdany can contain any data type. What it really says is any data type which meets certain constraints. An example of one of these constraints is that the data being stored must be copyable. You cannot store a move-only data type, such as std unique pointer, in an any variable. It is worth mentioning that an std any container can also contain nothing at all, which many definitions overlook. The std any class has one default constructor, which creates an any variable which contains no value. You can also construct an any supplying an initial value, which will be stored exactly as provided with no conversion. Looking at our example, data one will have the value of 42, which means this variable stores an int. If at some point later in the code, someone assigns a float to data one, then the stored data type will automatically be changed to float. The any class also supports copy construction and move construction. In order to use the value stored in an std any variable, you must do an operation called any cast. The any cast will check to ensure the type you are asking for exactly matches the type currently stored in the variable. If this check fails, no value is returned and an error will be reported. This makes any cast type safe, since all type errors are caught before the value is used. However, this type check can only be performed at runtime, so an invalid any cast must result in a runtime error. The most common usage is shown on line A and this will throw an exception if the check fails. Alternately, you can use the form on line B, 
which will return a null pointer if the check fails. Since the value contained in the variable size w happens to be an int, both of these casts will succeed. The any class also provides a method called type, which can be used to ask what data type is currently present in the variable. The type method returns an std type info value, which can be compared to the return type of the type ID operator. This allows you to determine whether the std any value matches a specific data type. In our example, we are specifically checking for a type ID of std vector int. It is worth mentioning that you cannot query if the any variable is some vector. You must specify the exact vector data type. If your any variable might contain various vector types, you would have to query for each one individually. The class template std optional is also a container for a single value. For this class, the value must either be a specific data type t or contain no value. An std optional can be created from a value of type t or any value which can be implicitly converted to t. The most common place to use std optional is when you want to indicate there is no value or something was not found in a return type or a parameter. Prior to C17, the typical way to indicate an invalid result was to use a special value to represent the lack of a value. Many interfaces return minus one, zero, or a null pointer when a value could not be determined. Several methods in the C++ standard library return an iterator to the end of a container to indicate the operation did not succeed. This allows users of the API to test the iterator for end, which is sometimes confusing. What happens when end is a valid result? Programmers often refer to these as magical values. It is often hard to pick good magical values since they must be out of bounds from the set of valid possible values. In some cases, it is impossible since all values of the given data type are valid. The std optional template provides a better and consistent solution to represent the lack of a value. There are several constructors for std optional, and these are the most common. A default constructed optional variable has no value. An optional value can also be constructed with an initial value as shown in data1 and data2. Since an optional value contains a specific data type, the initial value will be converted to conform to the template parameter. Data1 will contain the integer value 42 with no fractional part. Data2 will have the value of 73.0 as a float. An optional value can be copy constructed from another optional with a compatible data type. In our example for the copy constructor, the value 73.0, which was stored in data2, will be truncated to the integer 73 and stored in var1 as an int. The optional class also supports move construction. In this example, we have a function which returns an optional value indicating the first occurrence of a given character in some string. The return type is std optional int, which may or may not contain a value when the function has completed. The first line of the function default constructs the optional return value. This produces an optional variable containing no value. If we find a match, then the current array index is assigned to the return value and we break out of the loop. 
Using optional encourages writing a single return statement at the end of the function. Since the variable rentval is not assigned until a match is found, we avoid constructing an integer at the beginning of the function. In the case where no match is ever found, no integer is ever constructed. For a simple type like int, this does not really matter. However, if the t is an expensive data type to construct, or does not have a default constructor, this property of std optional is very useful. One last point to remember is that this function will always return an std optional int, even when the variable rentval is not assigned and contains no value. This means there is no need to select and document a magical value to return when the search fails. For more information about the CopperSpice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.